Morning, everybody. Another chilly start to the day out here. It's, uh, it was four degrees when I got up, so I let the sun come out and warm it up a little bit. It's now real feel 11 out in the wind. A lot warmer here in the bus just because of the sun coming through the windows and warming up the inside. Not much. Toes are cold already. Um, I'm working on welding and seaming up that back piece. So that's probably what's all on the agenda for today. Try not to catch the bus on fire. See you in a minute. As you can see, I started spot welding some of this back in place. I'm just going to, because it's sheet metal, I'm going to spot it like that and then come back, keep spotting it, keep grinding it down until I actually get a solid weld one side to the other. Clean it all up so I get good adhesion and good penetration from the welder. And I will show you again when I get more done. These gaps are always fun. See you in a minute. All right. Got it all seamed back together for now. Got some of the bend out of it. Had to fix that end a little bit. But the next step back here, before I go any further with this, is to figure out the ends of the bus. What I'm going to do, how I'm going to cap it. And then figure out in here the layout. Uh, I'm going to tear these runners down, these side rails, get them out of the way. Um, and it's pretty much going to be a short day today. My toes are cold, even though the sun's coming out. Walking around in here ain't too bad. It is still a little on the chilly side out there. Ice on the ground is not melting. Uh, the only thing's melting is on the surfaces where the sun's hitting. So, see you in a bit. All right, guys. Here's what's going on. Getting moisture as it's warming up. Coming down onto the floor. Well, looking into these window sills, some of them have water, moisture coming in. I don't know if I can get down in there or not. But that's corresponding basically down to the floor in these areas. Water there. Moisture down in there. So, I'm going to have to check this out. I'm probably going to have to drill these rivets out. Which is fine because they can all be replaced with a screw. So I'm going to drill the rivets out, remove these side panels, just to see where the water is coming from. It's got to be fixed back here, anyways. So no harm, no foul on that one. But if it allows me to find the, the where the water and the moisture is coming in, uh, same here, moisture. Looking in there, I can't see a spot. Well, they, you know, they, you can see they've had silicone on here at one time trying to stop leaks. So, I think that's the next step. Get these panels here off. And, uh, which I, you know, I can always put better insulation in if I want to put the aluminum back on I can put the aluminum back on some people put wood various things but in order to find exactly where moisture is coming in I think that's the best bet is to start there so far I mean you know I don't see any leaks on the roof and except for that one spot in the front and I had one drip earlier as it was warming up in here. So right in here there's a drip. A little bit of water starts, runs over here. 
But like I said, corresponding to where this leak is, there was a strobe light on the roof. So that one's not too bad. It's these other ones down here all along this side where all the moisture's at. I don't think it's running down through here. Even though I am getting water, but I do believe the water is coming from the windows running down. You can almost see like little trails where the water has ran down. You know? But I won't know, I won't be able to find the exact source. See, it's dry, dry, dry back here. Dry, it starts to get damp, starts to get damp. And here's a pillar. You know, this has been covered. Even the insulation inside is dry. So, I don't believe it's coming in from back here or here. There's no, there's no nowhere for it to come in, but it's damp here. Corresponding window. Ice on the outside. I believe the water is coming in from underneath the windows. Behind here, running down. You know, it's coming in through the rivet holes. Running down, getting on here. So I believe that the source is back there. I will take a few panels off and we'll see what we got. See you in a minute. Alright everybody, here's what we got. The way this bus was built. This piece is riveted on on the outside. There's a seam here. There's a gap underneath these pillars. And the way these are made notched out to go around this here sits underneath riveted in place water comes in gets on here you see it gets on here runs down runs down here then these are on the outside sometimes it goes through look at that it's all damp back in there comes down so the outside of the windows are what's causing leak and good thing I had this end here for my guinea pig because I have to fr I have to frame this in with something solid notch this out here put my bar in I have to match the angle or yeah I'm gonna match the angle of the roof and fill in this whole piece here with framework you know, got to be safe. You know, right now there's, you know, besides this set of rivets here, it's the only thing holding this panel in place. So I have to take that window out. And I'm just going to take these windows out anyways and put in solid steel um, for the garage areas. So, and then I have to box that in all the way up and around. With, with, with something solid because you know I could use it for gate hoists I can mount up in the corners you know the springs is uh, easy assist so I was going to take this panel out here but once I took this panel out and realized the rivets are under the windows and all I had was a, just a, a tar a tar strip here very minor caulk here and then there's the window these rubber seals on top and that's it that's that's all that you know it that's all that stop these windows from leaking so I'm gonna go outside on a nice day all the windows that I'm keeping because, I mean, they're very, very simple to come out. Two screws there. That window will come out. I kept the screws, of course, so I can put it back in and leave that window in place. Keep it secured. 
But there are, are places like, oh, right here where I got marked bathroom. This window is going to be in the middle of a wall. So this window will be removed. Steel put in. Insulation. Um, where the refrigerator goes, I believe it's going to be this one. Uh, so I'm still toying around with it, but this window will come out. New sheet metal outside, welded in place, sealed all the way around, painted, insulated on the inside, covered. Um, so not all these windows are staying in. Some of them will come out. Um, some of them will go. And the ones that do come out will be covered with sheet metal, re-welded in place, sealed, a whole nine yards, insulated, inside covering, covering the insulation. So, but I think that's it for the day. Now that I got that and I found out exactly how the water is getting in, I'm quite okay. It's still a pain in the butt, but... You know what? We'll figure it out. Note to self. Hit the record button before you start talking. <laughs> Alright everyone. This is the end of the day for me. I'm going to go in, get warm, relax. Now that I know what's ahead of me, I can start making plans. Figuring out what I need to get before. You know, I like to have materials on hand while I work. I do have the sheet metal to box in the back. I don't have the steel tubing I want. Well, I mean, I may have it. I haven't looked around yet to see. And I don't know if I'm going to do round tubing or square. If I do square tubing, I don't have a whole lot of that laying around. Um, so I'm going to have the pattern, the arch. Make a pattern. So as I make the steel tubing, I can match the pattern to fit inside that roof and down the side rails um, and then of course you know figure out what I'm gonna do about insulation whether I'm gonna pop these panels all loose from the down the sides and on the bottoms open them up shove in insulation put the panels back down screw them back in place fill the holes paint them I'm not quite sure yet because if I remove those I am messing with every windowsill. So I'm not really sure if I want to go that route. If I do, I have to take every window out, put in new seals, and put the windows I want to keep back in with new seals, or just seal the outside. You know, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. New seals wear out, they get old caulking window seal on the outside it wears out it gets old so regardless eventually somewhere down the line they'll leak again it's just it's a given with windows and caulk silicone everything shrinks everything expands it's just the nature of the beast I mean this is a 1989 yes the floors were wet the bolt holes were probably you know when I was welding on the back, the undercoating that was flaming up was not that thick. Um, I will probably end up cleaning and rebrushing re on either like a, a truck bed liner underneath just to, you know, after everything is getting bolted through the floor or removed from the floor is done. You know all the holes patched and everything else like that. Then I will go through and re-protect the undercarriage. Um, that way I know that there's not going to be any water coming in from underneath. Um, you know, everybody been behind a big truck before. They throw a lot of water. Big tires, lots of water. The undercarriages get saturated. Uh, you used to work at a bus yard. Back when I was I don't know, 18 years old or something like that, and it was in a northern state, lots of salt. 
Of course, I was the guinea pig to go underneath and had to clean and wash all the salt off of these buses in the bus garage. Um, it, it is what it is. They, they get a lot of water underneath. So if you have an open hole anywhere and you have something absorbent inside that's going to wick up all that moisture, it's going to get wet. So until the next time, I appreciate you. Now everybody that subscribed, I thank you. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, this guy's alright. Until next time, y'all be safe out there and have a great day.